please note this lanyard is a fail due to a lot of damage. It's just an example. First thing we're going to look at is the hardware. We're going to make sure that it functions so when we open it and we let go it closes instantly and automatically. If it sticks or hangs up we need to take it out of service. We're looking for cracks, for corrosion, any types of distortion and once again make sure that it's functioning properly. So inspect it like any other piece of hardware and make sure that it's functioning. Now we're looking at the label. The label is present and it's legible. We're okay. Now we need to inspect the energy absorber or the shock absorber. The pouch that the energy absorber is wrapped in has to be free of damage. So burn marks or cut marks on the pouch. Um, if we see any damage like that, we take it out of service because that could cut into the energy absorber. Or if webbing has been pulled out of the cover that holds it together, then we would take that out of service as well. This is on the shock absorber. There's a burn hole on the shock absorber. When we see a burn on a shock absorber, we remove it from service. This is also showing an extreme burn mark. Also feeling the webbing. So it's not just a visual inspection. We're feeling it to make sure the webbing isn't stiff from chemical damage or from high heat damage. Once webbing becomes stiff, it's becoming brittle and it's not as, not as strong as it used to be. Somebody wrote on the, on the webbing in this case as well, uh, where the initials are written there, we recommend that you do not write on any form of webbing. The manufacturers will allow you to use specific brands of marker, but it's still not a recommended practice. Now we're seeing a lot of uh, burn marks and damage on the webbing. We would take it out of service for that, uh, especially when we have burn marks on stitching. It's weakened the stitching. This has got a wear pad on it that's going through the eye of the hook. That's just to make it last longer because the hooks are always moving about and wearing the webbing out. Check the other side of the stitch pattern to make sure that the pattern's intact. No broken stitches, no abrasion on the stitches. In this case, we do have a burn on some of the stitching, so we would take that out of service. Stitching is very important, so it has to be in good condition. And again, we're looking at a wear pad. The wear pads can be damaged because that's what they're for. They're to make your equipment last longer. But once we've gone through the webbing, the stitching, the labels, and the hardware, then we flip it over and we do the other side and inspect every inch of it on both sides to make sure that the piece of equipment is in good working order. So remember, we're using our eyes and we're also doing it by feel. And remember, we're looking for any signs of damage. So it could be chemical damage, we could have paint on it, we could have discoloration. Those are all forms of damage that we would take out of service. You can remove paint if it's done carefully without causing chemical damage to the webbing. And also be mindful of any broken fibers or cut fibers, cut marks, any type of damage that we see on the webbing, we need to take that out of service. This lanyard is an example of catastrophic damage. Uh, the snap hook is very, very rusty, so we would not use that. And you can see there's a lot of discoloration on the webbing. That's from ultraviolet light damage or heavy sunlight exposure. As we pull it apart, you can see the color that it should be. So there's a lot of damage on this based on um, being old and being misused. And uh, the snap hook is not closing. It's sticking wide open so that'd be a fail there. The rust and corrosion are also fail criteria. This is a tube style energy absorbing lanyard and like a standard pack style energy absorbing lanyard we always check labels first and do a hardware inspection but on this one the wrinkly portion that I'm pulling apart here that's an expansion joint that allows the lanyard to expand in the event of a fall. So we need to look in between each of the folds and inspect it for signs of visible damage, such as burn holes or cuts or broken fibers, etc. As we go through it, we will get to a portion that has a warning tag on it. The warning tag, or the fall arrest indicator, in this lanyard is still folded up, so it's not deployed. In the event of a fall, the lanyard will stretch out, and the warning tag 
will deploy and you know the lanyard has been involved in a fall and we, and we remove it from service uh, immediately. Now, not all lanyards have warning tags. If they do not have a warning tag, we have to measure them to see if it's been deployed or not or if some of the wrinkles have come out of it, then we know it's been deployed. On a wire rope anchor sling, we've made sure that the label is present and legible. Now we're checking the hardware on the O-ring and making sure that the markings are present and the proper braking strength and approvals are in place. Checking both ends, we'll also check the thimble and the thimble eye and the ferrule that's attached to the wire rope. And as we go through the wire rope, what we are looking for is any signs of visible damage. Corrosion, uh, broken wires, bent wires, if it's twisted and starting to unravel, almost uh, like a birdcage, we would look for damage like that. If it's got a kink in it, any signs of visible damage, we would remove that from service. When inspecting wire rope, rotate the wire rope in your hand so you can inspect all sides of it and always wear gloves. In the event there is a broken wire on it and you do get a small skin puncture, any contaminants that are on the wire rope can now enter your bloodstream and can cause some uh, extremely bad health effects. On an anchor strap, the first thing we look for are the labels. Make sure the labels are present and we are able to read them, so they must be legible. Then we're going to look at the hardware, and we're looking for any distortion, any rust, any cracking, any signs of visible damage. This one also has a wear pad inside to make it last longer. As it's flopping back and forth inside the webbing, there's an extra wear pad in there to make the webbing last longer. On this unit, the inside strap is the load-bearing material. There's also a large pad sewn to the outside uh, as a wear pad to make the anchor strap last longer when it's being subjected to abrasion and when it's going over top of I-beams and, and other types of anchors. The next thing we're going to look at is the stitching. The stitching, we're looking for broken stitches or abrasion from wear on the stitching. Make sure all the stitches are present and that there's no nothing missing in the stitch pattern. The red line is a wear indicator. It runs on the inside of the webbing. If you see red material uh, appearing through webbing, that's time to take it out of service. It means it's been subjected to abrasion and it's time to remove it. Please be aware that not all types of webbing or in all brands of webbing have wear indicators built into it. By holding this piece up to the light we can see that there is an abrasion indicator inside the webbing. This is a beam anchor and a beam anchor has no stitching or no webbing so we have labels and metallic connections on this. Check the labels, make sure they're present and legible. Now we're going to go through all the hardware components. So we're looking for any forms of corrosion, any cracking, any distortion, and we're always going to check this for function and make sure the device is working the way it has been designed by the manufacturer. This is a screw-activated carabiner. We are not allowed to use these for fall protection because it is not automatic locking. Rescue technicians and rope access technicians are allowed to use this style of carabiner, but again, for fall protection, we are not allowed to use a manual closing or a screw-style carabiner. This is an automatic locking carabiner or an auto lock. We use a quarter turn to open it. When we let go, it closes and locks automatically. And you can operate it with one hand. Now the markings are on the carabiner. It'll show the braking strength, 5,000 pounds or stronger, and the approvals such as CSA or ANSI, so they must be marked so we know that it's suitable. Those are the load-bearing points.
The ends of the carabiner are the strength portions of the load bearing point. The weak part of the carabiner is always going to be the gate. Now this one has a 3600 pound rated gate. Although the gate is much stronger, it is still the weakest part of the carabiner. The carabiner on the right is also not functioning properly and there are no markings on it. If there are no markings on it, we don't know if it is strong enough to use for fall protection, therefore we do not use it.